this program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Welcome to Her Story, The Journey to Winning a Seat at the Table. I'm your host, Mary Jane Murray, and this program is a series of conversations with inspirational women with amazing stories to share. And stories are a tapestry of lifelong experiences and events. Let's explore the journey. My guest today is Diane Lawler, and she is a retired educator with the Blue Water District School Board. And she was born and raised in locally in Markdale. And uh, through her parents, they encouraged this sense of travel and adventure, um, of which we're going to hear about with, uh, with Diane's journey. She attended the University of Laurentian and then went off to France for a year. And then returning to Canada, went to Nipissing University for her teaching degree. Now, through the teaching opportunities that she had and the Canadian, uh, uh, Canadian teachers' unions and outreach programs, Diane was able to travel to Africa. And then through that experience, was able to help develop a curriculum with a uh, local teacher university, a uh, uh, teacher local teacher unions um, in those countries, and it was really important um, to develop curriculum that was reflective of the communities, and also to encourage the families to send their girl child to school, and we know how important that education is. And uh, we often see very accomplished women in very interesting roles, but that spark can emerge at any age and at any stage. And this is Diane's journey. Welcome, Diane, and thank you for taking the time this morning to join us. Well, thank you. I, I'm actually very humbled to be asked to do this. I feel my journey is my journey that's I'm low key, but I did it my way. And uh, yeah, so thank you. <laughs> well, we know that the foundations of our lives going forward are often formed in our very early years and in our youth. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about ex your experience growing up in Markdale. Well, I was the eldest of four girls, and um, my father had his own business, so he had no boys to help him. Um, he was in construction, so we did a lot of things at home that, you know, it wasn't, you know, inside jobs or the outside jobs. So that was one thing that made us independent and, you know, feel that we could do whatever my dad or my mom asked us to do. But also, too, they were travelers themselves. My father was in the Air Force, spent some time in Europe in the 50s. And my mom went to um, Europe in the 50s with three women on a boat. And that was pretty uncommon at the time. So we had those stories growing up and that, um, that uh, uh, inspiration to go and see other places and experience other cultures. So... And it was encouraged by our family. We, you know, when I was 18, we went to England for, for two weeks, which was, you know, in 1978 was pretty uncommon and traveled around in a rented vehicle. And from there, it was just, I wanted to go and see the world and didn't, you know. And so I, when I went to university, I went to Sudbury, to Laurentian, and that was a long way away at the time. You didn't come home on weekends. And um, from there, I just started going further afield. And um, yeah, and after university, ended up in France for a year because I didn't want to do the work of what I had studied at university and didn't know what to do and traveled there and then came home and went to teacher's college. So, um, and that's where this part of the journey that we're going to talk about started is when I came home and went to 
teacher's college and felt I was only coming home to go to teacher's college because my mother wanted me to have something to do when I came home. And she was a teacher. She said, I'll sign you up for teacher's college. And I said, sure, okay. And um, I ended up at teacher's college and loving it and really finding um, a place where I felt, um, um, where I guess I started to develop my voice and um, become very active in working with other colleagues, but also working with children and developing curriculum. And that was the start of my 30 year journey in education. So yeah, that's some of the things that really got me going on my path to, um, to Africa. Another thing too is um, when I was, um, uh, about halfway through my teaching career, um, I had uh, uh, a desire to travel and teach in another country. And so in nine, 2004, my family and I went to, um, to outside of Canberra in a community called Jerobombra. And I taught in a primary school there for a year. So leaving everything that I was comfortable with and the resources I was comfortable with to going um, to a school where I didn't know the curriculum as well. Um, had to make new friendships with colleagues there and find a different way of teaching and addressing the needs of the Australian um, children. And that was, an, was a really big year for, for me and for my family to experience some um, Aussie life. So much so that in 2012, Jim and I went back to um, Australia for another teacher exchange, and we ended up in Perth on the west coast of Australia and had another amazing year. Um, different um, different in teaching environment again, um, different curriculum, different methodology that I had to learn, but also share my methodology that we had developed in, in Blue Water. And um, so that laid some foundations for going and seeing what it was like somewhere else in, in, in a school and in the educational system. So, yeah. Well, that in a sense is a, a pretty um, amazing journey. But what I'm, what I'm hearing is that you're a seeker of knowledge and, and also that sense of adventure um, going through your veins kind of to, to see what is on the other side of the continent, what else, what others are doing. But it's all themed in education and the importance mm -hmm. of education, um, not only in individual countries, but worldwide. Um, how important that is. And yeah. so what I'm also hearing from you is this um, love of interacting with children and and bringing new a curriculum or revising curriculum so that it becomes more relevant. Yeah, the, the methodology to engage children um, was, you know, um, a real focus of mine. and. Uh, and just learning how other um, places um, used um, methodology to in, to incite, in, encourage children to learn. And I was a big proponent of language, reading and writing. So yeah, it was it was pretty exciting. It was challenging at times. There's times when I thought, oh my goodness, what am I doing here? Um, my family struggled at the start of it, but at the same time, at the end of the day, um, we were happy to come home, but also sad to leave new friends and a new, you know, a taste of a different way of life in, in another, you know, in, in another country. And you make good friends when you travel and um, you meet, you reach out to a lot of people and people are, when I look back over my notes, it's, you know, the, the people that I've met and the interaction that I've had that really warms the heart and, um, gives me great pleasure to to um to think about and think wow how fortunate i am to have had these opportunities mm -hmm. so in in your educational experience in your teaching experience you 
were very confident in your voice and generally confident in your experience, your knowledge and your skill set. Um, but going to Africa could change some of that and bring in sort of new, um, having to challenge yourself to bring in new skills and to find a way to um, have your, vo not only have your voice heard, but valued in Africa, because um, there are a number of countries in Africa where they do not value the education of women. And how did you manage to meet that challenge? Well, I, I think partly I, I had a, uh, a strong foundation in here in Blue Water with um, our, well, it was formerly the Federation of Women Teachers, and then it became the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario. And I was quite active in my union here and finding a voice and I worked on the status of women um, committee for a couple of a number of years, um, promoting women in um, you know uh, leadership roles, and also then I also spent some time on social justice committees at, at the um, with the ETFO as well, and so with that, that's what um, opened the doors to me for thinking about going to um, the Canadian Teachers Federation and apply for what's called Project Overseas. And Project Overseas is um, a program um, supported by the Canadian Teachers Federation, CTF, and the union affiliates across the country. And it's been going for many, many years. And what they do is they send teachers to various parts of the world, Africa and the Caribbean mainly, and work with the teachers unions there to help um, them develop programs, curriculum that support the needs of their teachers and their students. So um, I think that strong union based helped me um, uh, prepare for going to Africa it, or I, and I was fortunate. I was blessed enough to get chosen to go to Africa, and, and the first time was through uh, was to Sierra Leone um, as a team member in 2014. And my what they has asked me to do as part of that team was to work with um, uh, Rebecca, who was a strong uh, uh, girl education advocate in Sierra Leone to develop a um, program to um, deliver to teachers so that they could go back and um, raise the issue of how it is important of getting the girl child to school and what types of things they could do to, to get the community on side. So that was in 2014. And then um, I decided again at the end of my teaching career, well, I've got, I'll try it one more time. And I reapplied for Project Overseas in 2015. And this time I was chosen to be the project leader to go to Ghana and um, to, uh, lead a team of three other teachers um, in a project that was um, to, again, to develop um, programs with um, teachers in Ghana, and particularly we went to the northern regions of Ghana, and we um, worked at developing um, literacy and numeracy um, skills as well as um, education for girls. And um, my focus in that project was education for girls and getting um, teachers on board to. Um, recognize the importance of getting the girl child to school. So the summer of 2015 was a very intense summer. We traveled hundreds of kilometers to um, areas in the far north of Ghana, working with an amazing group of dedicated teachers um, to um, highlight the importance of, um, of education. And these teachers are totally committed. They're 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 hardworking. Um, they um, 
are receptive to having Canadian teachers come and work alongside with them to help them develop ideas, curriculum, activity strategies that will work within their communities. I mean, CTF isn't there to tell them how to do it, but rather to work alongside with them to give help them develop skills, leadership skills. And then our job became sort of the guide from the side to allow them to go out and work with other teachers in their schools to develop the literacy, the numeracy, and the girls' education. So that was the summer of 2015. And it was, um, the, the, the teachers there are, I mean, oh, we, oh, they, they work with very little. They have huge classrooms um, in um, conditions that we cannot fathom here in Canada. Um, we went to different schools and we would see um, children, you know, um, one school I was, when I was reviewing my notes, there were three teachers at this school. Two of them were at the workshop with us. And so two teachers were left back to look after 230 some children in three classrooms and, you know, limited resources. Um, but, um, when we went to visit them, they were so excited. The children were excited to see us and welcome their teachers back. And um, it was um, so uh, it, was, it was very humbling to be able to, you know, experience that and see that and be welcomed into that, into those communities. So and then um, the fall of 2015, I was retired. I was on a canoe trip with my husband and I get this phone call from Alex at CTF asking if I would go back to Ghana in October to work with one other Canadian retired teacher, Carla. And um, we were went back and we worked with the uh, NAT, the Ghana, Ghana National Association uh, uh, of Teachers. And we developed a um, uh, uh, some workshops that we would deliver in the northern regions of Ghana as well. Um, and it was gender community mobilization was the one, so gender equity, getting the girl child to school. And then the other project was to work with um, teachers to help mentor younger teachers to get them into the profession and help them develop curriculum and action plans that would um, benefit um, the schools um, in in the, the far northern regions of Ghana. So that was, um, so it was rather interesting when I read my notes again, I, I journal all the time when I travel and just going back in, in October and meeting up with teachers that I had met, up, met with in um, July and just how excited they were to see them, to see me and, how um, welcoming they were and um, sharing their the stories of what they had done and what they were looking forward to doing in this new um, project of gender community mobilization. And I worked with um, two amazing people at, uh, we called it NAT, um, the, uh, the Ghana National Associations of Teachers, um, Helena and uh, Tom Thomas, and just working with their head teachers and developing um, workshops and going out and delivering them that they would then take back to their teachers to get, um, find ways in which, for example, with the community mobile, gender mobilization is how can you get the community on board to get your girl child to school? What were some of the um, obstacles that teachers faced? and what could they do to overcome those? So, um, yeah, we, so we did a series of workshops in I think three different areas on that. So, and, and uh, working with Helena, who is the gender coordinator, a, a, a force to be reckoned with. If anybody was, whose story should be shared was, should be Helena's because her story in Ghana is, is you know, one of amazing, um, uh, you know, strength. She um, 
and, and her, the, she was a force to be reckoned with and what she was doing to get girl the girl child to school and she knew exactly what to do to go out into communities to get the elders on board and we just took our lead from her and um, she um, um, she, she led the way and we supported her as best we could with different ideas and strategies. And I think we were there more for moral support than anything because she, she knew exactly how to do it and how to get those teachers on board. So um, I think often of my friend, Helena, she, she tells me I'm her Canadian sister. So yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> it's, really, it's really important to have mentorship. Um, as you journey through life and you take on these uh, uh, experiences and sometimes challenges because the mentorship not only gives you more confidence, but it's also a shared experience. And uh, what I'm hearing from you is that how important it, what it is for the time that you spent um, mentoring and becoming um, not only colleagues, but uh, forging friendships through all of this. And you see your role as a supporting role as opposed to, you know, the leader charging on. And I think that is so respectful in communities that, that you are reflecting what the community needs, not necessarily determining what you think it needs. And I think that is so important when we're going into other countries and other communities. Oh. Um, the other thing that I'm hearing too is that you're mentioning a lot of women's names. So these teachers mostly are women, strong women, because in order to become a teacher in some of these communities, I'm sure there were challenges. Uh, the women I were higher up in the union. So Rebecca and Sierra Leone, um, Helena in Africa. So they were had leadership roles within the union. When you went out into the communities, there were women teachers there, but most of the were head teachers were men and getting the men on board. And, and they were willing to come on board and they needed strategies to help them um, you know, promote the girl child coming to school to promote mentorship of young teachers. So um, in the outlying areas, teacher, women teachers have huge um, obstacles. You know, um, when they, um, sometimes if they've had a baby, they take their child to work with them. You know, when we did workshops, they their children would be with them because there's no home care. Um, you know, the women in rural areas, because we were dealing with teachers in rural areas, to have a tremendous workload before they even get to school. And then they've got these big classrooms. So, but um, the, the Matt was working at promoting women. And as I looked at their, their membership, there are more women getting involved. But at the same time, gender equity in Ghana in particular that I looked up, it's still a, an issue of getting um, women um, in particular rural areas the support that they need to be to, to do their job as a, a teacher, but also to, you know, as a family, you know, as a mother and, and taking care of themselves. So, it's so, yeah, I'm hoping that through time we, and then this gender mobilization continues. I, I don't know where it's at. Helena retired and at the age of 60, you have to retire in Ghana. And I know that Helena now is charging the way in developing a farm. She's got, she's always thinking of women and she has a farm in her home area that um, has, you know, cashews, cassava, other things. And it's for women to come and work and, um, profit from the labors of having a farm so yes but um, wow. it's still a big struggle for women women teachers there well i i do have a quote uh, you may recognize the quote um it's it's the education is a right not a lottery and what you've been doing uh with your uh outreach program through the uh, Canadian uh, uh, teachers unions um, is is 
is trying to build education as a right for everyone um, and the, the struggles, because we know that when um, girls and women are educated, it changes communities, it benefits communities, and it rises them up and they become more economically stronger in, in that respect. So I, I think that that journey has been absolutely amazing. We're already past the last five minutes. So I wanted to ask you, what did you learn about yourself on this journey? Um, I think um, it's, uh, it's okay to be the quiet one, um, to continue to do what you feel is important and not worrying about being recognized. I, 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 on the background, I mean, when I went into those communities and they were excited to see me, but I was happy to be back behind the scene and let the real agents of change in Africa be the forefront. So I'm more the guide from the side and I'm really comfortable with that. I don't like the limelight. So, and being a, I, the importance of being a good listener. So, and I, and I guess I knew that, but um, yeah, it's, uh, I'd rather we, be back in the shadows. Some... I'm sorry. We may have some young uh, teachers uh, viewing the program. What words of wisdom would you pass along to them? And because I didn't even know that there was the the union outreach programs, I, I wasn't even aware of that. So, what what would you recommend for young teachers to join their to be an active um, participant in their union? to find out the, the important role union plays in everyday life, in, in public education, and um, be supportive and take on, get involved. I mean, the union has done a lot for me, and um, it's, um, it, it's definitely we need to keep our union strong because they are the voice of public education. So get involved. <laughs> Okay, so we're just wrapping up now, and I, I did say that um, I had two little pop questions at the end, um, if we had time. And so, um, Diane, what brings you joy? Being outside, um, so hiking, canoeing, camping, um, exploring the flowers, the birds, that gives us gives me a lot of joy and it's something my husband and I do together so it's yeah that that brings a lot of joy to me is being outside and experiencing our amazing natural world mm. and we live in a, a gorgeous environment um we do. so very quickly do you have a saying that kind of gets you through the day um a day at a time you know, right now it's a day at a time. And yeah. um yeah, that's that's what helps me each day. So okay. Well that's great. I really appreciate you taking the time to to have Thank this you. conversation today. I've really learned a lot, um, which is really important to me, but it's been such a pleasure to see you again. And okay. um please please join us next time on her story for another amazing journey. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us or connect with us on social media. Are you the type who would keep going or stop? It's not easy to stop when you have an addiction. Legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction. It trivializes its consumption. Let's be vigilant. If you need help, visit portage.ca.